And welcome in to the Take the North podcast along with the Chicago Tribune's Dan Wiederer. I am Mark Grody from Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. And this is our usual listen to this podcast on Take the North. We all have some really compelling audio that we're going to play. We've got three big cuts for you. But Dan, we need to start with some of the news of the day. Not necessarily shocking news, but the Bears did make a couple of roster moves. And that's it for Valus Jones Jr., the the Bears' former third-round draft pick and wide receiver has been cut. Also, Kari Blassengame has been cut, the Bears' little-used fullback. Both of those guys are gone from the roster. Your reaction right away to that, Dan? Yeah, well, obviously, Valus Jones fell out of favor in week one with the uh, the fumble on the kickoff return, and a guy who fought so hard to make the team coming out of training camp obviously didn't do enough to keep that job, and so now he's going to be looking for work. He was put on waivers today, Mark, and so 30 of one other teams will have the opportunity to claim Valus Jones. It'll be very interesting to see how the league reacts to that. And then Kari Blasingame, a guy who uh, is released, and, and obviously the fullback hasn't been something that's been a major part of the Shane Waldron offense right here as the Bears get healthier and need to create some some roster room. They've got to make some mechanical moves to that that 53-man roster, and this is part of it here today for uh, for Ryan Poles. Yeah, once we saw Doug Kramer coming in in fullback situations and using tight ends in that regard, he kind of knew that that was the end for Kari Blassingame, who I feel like had his best highlights during a couple of training camps where sometimes we would see him making plays like, oh, maybe he is a part of it, but he just wasn't a part of it. And then last thing I'll say about Bayless Jones Jr., unless you have anything else you want to add to this as well, Dan. I mean, talk about a guy who they gave every single no opportunity doubt. to. This guy did not get cheated. G- great guy in the locker room. One of those dudes that as a human being, you feel bad for him, but he does not belong on this roster. And finally, the Bears realize that. It's a cutthroat league. And as you're trying to make that climb from a team that's just trying to discover itself to a team that wants to contend for meaningful championships, you have to make – decisions that push you in the right direction. Bayless Jones, as you mentioned, had a lot of opportunities to prove that he could be a consistent difference maker. He proved to be just that, but in the negative fashion, consistently made plays that, that put your, your team in, in jeopardy of losing. Uh, and, and so this is just the league. This is the league, you know, and it's it, it's a cruel league. And, it, and it, it, but, it, but again, this isn't that cruel to Bayless Jones because as you mentioned, he had every opportunity to kind of state his case to stick around and to become a bigger part of this football team and just didn't meet his moments when his moments were there. Yep. And knowing his attitude, he's going to be just fine. And I assume that somebody will scoop him up and give him another opportunity. But we shall see. So, Valus Jones and Kari Blassingame no longer with the Chicago Bears. Let's get to some of our best sound of the week in our listen to this segment right here on the Take the North podcast. And as we sit here on a Friday Every once in a while on a Friday, not always, because Fridays are laid back days here at Hallis Hall. You know, not a lot of the players are talking. Some guys are getting out early. Not as many reporters are typically here. But guess who was talking today? Jalen Johnson, the Bears' top cornerback, one of the top cornerbacks in the league who are probably going to see a lot against Terry McLaurin this Sunday and probably most of the time. But Jalen Johnson today, guys, was asked about to differentiate, first of all, between between Jaden Daniels and Marcus Mariota. And if you haven't heard, Jaden Daniels is a game time decision for the Washington game. So Marcus Mariota would be next man up again. So Johnson asked to differentiate about that. Just more dynamic. I mean, same play style, same QB style, dual threat, extend plays with the legs, get on the perimeter, make good throws. But I mean, just... Dan is young, more dynamic. Of course, Mariota Seymour been around a little, a little longer, more experienced. So, I mean, that's the biggest difference. Does it mean extra work for you guys when you're not sure who it is? Or no? no, same style quarterback. You, as the competitor you are, would you prefer to face the more dynamic quarterback and Daniels, as you said? I mean, honestly, I don't give a damn who's out there. I'm looking forward to whooping their ass either way. So, I mean, it doesn't really change too much for me. Just I know for us in the defense, we just want to go out there and win and dominate. That's our mindset, regardless of who the quarterback is. Yeah, I mean, it's classic Jalen Johnson out here today. I mean, I feel like he that that tells me, Dan, that he has been paying attention to a lot of the stuff that's been going on with the quarterback and has become infuriated over it and, and said what he said. He doesn't give a damn. 
I do I do believe the Bears are going to be much better off with Marcus Mariota in a quarterback. As he said, Jaden Daniels is the the much more dynamic quarterback. And you know, I predicted on the, the Molly and Haw show the Bears are gonna have their way with Marcus Mariota. And I am assuming, I am predicting that yes, duh, it's gonna be Mariota as the quarterback this Sunday. I am also predicting that as this sort of uh, mystery continues to linger. I would just tell people like think about what kind of betting odds you would put on Jaden Daniels starting after leaving last week's game in the first quarter, missing the first two practices this week, essentially being a quote-unquote limited participation participant in Friday's practice without uh, the media laying eyes on how he participated, you'd put it at like plus 1,200 that he plays in this football game. And so uh, it's very rare for any quarterback to miss several days of practice during a game week and come back and start much more difficult for a rookie who's got six starts under his belt and uh, seven starts under his belt and hasn't really been able to uh, participate in the week, you know, and go through it. Now to Jalen Johnson and what you just heard there. If you remember, Jalen Johnson came out of the tunnel in week four when they were playing the Rams at Soldier Field with a belt. The defensive starters were introduced that day and Jalen Johnson came out with a belt and he stopped after he came through the pyrotechnics and the smoke and all that. And he kind of cracked the belt a few times. This is Jalen whooping people's ass this year, Mark. And this is this is part of his MO this year. He's almost like this refreshing WWE character on game days, you know, and even the way he talks in these moments, right? Like you feel like, oh man, like this there, there's some theater to it with Jalen, but the competitive edge is so very real. Uh, the competitive confidence is so very authentic, and you heard it all in that soundbite. Yeah, and, and I was talking to some other reporters as we were walking out of that press conference, and it it's like, this guy, he's the real deal. I mean, he, he got paid big time, and we know a lot of guys will understandably take their foot off the gas pedal, and it's almost like the money has gotten him to the point where he wants to prove himself even more, and we know that how he feels like he got ripped off in the NFL's top 100 and all of that stuff. And I'll say this too, Dan, the uh, the belt is so – and I will ask Jalen Johnson about this just for fun at some point in time. That belt is way better than the old turnover bucket that they used to have <laughs> on that sideline, which, which honestly, man, when they had that turnover bucket, I was still doing sidelines, and I remember it being there, and then as the Bears – continued to not force turnovers they slowly took that turnover bucket away and it did not exist any further yeah there's no question about it i don't know how much longer that belt will be allowed to be used in pregame introductions when the bears get back to soldier field in a couple weeks we'll see but certainly jalen has the same mindset whether he's got props or not he's got the same mindset uh grody we're gonna we're gonna transition into a lot of caleb centric audio here and that's never a disappointment to our audience because the rookie quarterback has continued to play well he's going back home to some extent on Sunday to play near where he went to high school at Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C. And I had a chance earlier this week to, to talk to Caleb's high school coach. Actually, it was late last week, uh, Randy Trivers, who was alongside Caleb for, for three seasons at, at Gonzaga and got to feel who Caleb is as a dude. Now, you've been around Caleb since the spring, and you understand what connection means to him. He talks all the time about having the the power to bring a team together, the 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 you know the drive to to make sure everything is uh, united and linked in a way that that he feels good about the collective success of the team. I asked him in the spring. I think it was coming out of uh, the the final OTA when that sort of connection thing for him became a priority, and he said it was back in high school, where his high school coach emphasized the uh, qualities of trust and togetherness in the football team. So I asked Randy Trivers about that, and he said, it's funny you should say that because we had a mantra here at Gonzaga College High School called T3, and it was toughness, togetherness, and trust. And so it was very cool to see Caleb kind of carry some of that onward uh, in his time with the Bears. And here's what Randy Trivers had to say about T3 and how Caleb Williams has kind of embodied it and how it was emphasized with him going all the way back to his freshman year of high school. You know, so... It's a very, it's one of our sort of program values, one of our, our pillars, T3. And um, and so, yeah, he, you know, it's one thing that we try to foster in our players here at Gonzaga, you know, that, and, and as a quarterback, I would talk to Caleb about, hey, look, you got to earn the respect of, the, of all the players as a young quarterback. And, um, you know, you, you, you want to be as the quarterback, the toughest guy on the team, you know, so you, you want them to, to believe in you and 
see that you are the toughest guy. So the way that you work in the weight room, the way you work in our strength conditioning program, your mental toughness as far as how you respond to different adversity in practice on the field, ultimately when you play in the games. I said you, you, you've got to show them a, a sense of toughness um, and, and physically that you can handle it, but, but also mentally. All right, um, at that position, you're going to get knocked around, get your butt back up on your feet, show them. All right. Then I said, um, you know, it's, it's you know, togetherness. So it's, it's being, and Caleb always had great humility. Um, um, and it's that idea of connecting, you know, so it's all about the team. I said, you know, don't, 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 all, all the individual stuff will, will happen. You, you will shine. I said, but... It's it's more important that you let the receiver know when he drops a pass that you're coming back to him. Yeah, it's more important to know that that, that old lineman to know that um, you're 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 in it all the way with them and how much you appreciate the guy that's you know the, all the guys protecting you up front. You know it's it's um, it's even going to the other side of the ball and challenging the defense in a way in practice and how we work to help them know that, man, we're sharpening each other. So it's this togetherness piece that he, he really embraced and was really, really, really good with. And, and it's, some of it's, it's natural, you know, but some of it is, you know, was, was intentional. And then ultimately it's trust, you know. So there's nothing greater than, you know, when you're talking about in times of challenge, when you're talking about large groups of people, you know, there, there's got to be there's got to be trust. You know, so it's it's easy when everything is going well. It's easy to trust. It's easy to be everybody's. You know, everything's going to be smooth. Yeah. You know, but it's when you're challenged. You know, so that 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 be so. I mean, Caleb um, is like it doesn't surprise me to see how things are are going right now with with, with the Bears in terms of like, okay, you know. He's as highly touted. Everybody has these extremely high expectations of him to to go out and be, you know, the superhero. And you know, not not it's not always super super smooth for the superhero. You know, it, it's it's gonna you're gonna have some of the some of the um um you know hiccups or or uh, bumps in the road. But but Caleb really understands that very well. Like he knows that's part of the journey, and it doesn't. And he's not fearful of that. Yeah. Um, so it's like he understands. Like so, when he talks about man, you know, hey, toughness, togetherness, trust. Like he knows that that's necessary. Like some some of the stuff is necessary for that to happen. But I love it. I love you know that that he would he would um, you know verbalize that to you in terms of you know one of the one of the things that. Um, you know, helps to, to fuel him in terms of the, the guy that he is. He is. So yeah, Mark, you hear from 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 uh, Randy Travers there a long winded but but very in depth answer about the things that kind of drive Caleb Williams, and I think you've probably experienced that over the last six months and getting to know him and seeing kind of the way he operates in that space as both a rookie, a leader, and QB one. Well, and what he said right, and that was outstanding because it. It helps gives me some context. Actually, I'll say a couple things here. It gives me some context now to why Caleb Williams was in, in a premeditated move. It felt like heavily downplaying all of the built-in storylines. Him versus Jaden Daniels. Him going home. He was very short with the answers that uh, from the questions that we asked. And to me, that says. He didn't want to make this about him. He didn't want to be selfish. And I think that that comes with being a rookie as well and respecting the rest of the locker room. And maybe, you know, if this was three or four years down the road and he becomes what a lot of us think he's going to become, then maybe I would expect that gregarious personality to shine through a little bit more, maybe a little bit more Jalen Johnson-ish as time goes on. So that actually helps me a little bit to understand that. And I, and I understand, like, Dan, I understand. Like, I've covered every locker room in this town, and when there's a big storyline, 
80, and you know this too, 80% of the time, guys are going to downplay the yep. big story because they just don't want to make it about them. And they also don't want to put too much pressure on themselves. Yeah. And, and Caleb is in this for collective success. And that's a really cool part of who, what his personality is. For those who want to learn a little bit more about Caleb's connective powers, th that interview right there was part of uh, for a story that I did at Chicago Tribune.com about how Caleb has forged those connections inside Hallis Hall how it traces back to his high school days. And there's a lot of depth and meat to that. The last thing I'll say on the topic is that Cole Komets um, has proven both, I guess, enamored by Caleb Williams. I think you would use that word pretty, pretty yeah. easily without hesitation. And he, and he seems very convinced that the bears have finally found their guy. And so much of it is because of what his experience has been around Caleb and seeing him interact with his teammates, but also feeling his football first drive and that that sort of championship quest that he's on on an everyday basis. And so, like, when Cole talks about it, Cole understands the landscape here, right, Grody? Like, he knows what the history of Chicago quarterbacks is. He's lived it for the last five years with the number of different guys who have come through that revolving door. So when he expresses this conviction that they have their guy, you listen and your antenna are up and you go, okay, you know, like I'm going to take your word for this because you've experienced this through a lot of different paths and a lot of different ways that you're not just throwing this out there to throw it out there. There has to be some firm belief behind it. And so that Cole's voice uh, in the story I wrote is, is pretty powerful. Yeah. And you can see like, and, and I've brought this up before on the score and probably on the take North podcast as well. Caleb Williams is sitting in that locker room every single day, socializing with everybody. Cole Komet today, as we sit here recording on a Friday, they were hobnobbing in the corner, having a good time. So I see like Caleb, except not that the previous quarterbacks didn't, but it just feels different in that locker room every day with the gate, with the way Caleb Williams has commanded that locker room. Also love the fact that he, he said that um, your guy, uh, Randy tribes talking about the fact that, you know, Hey, if, if it doesn't work one time with the wide receiver, go right back to that guy. And then it's going to come in real handy with these veteran wide receivers that we keep talking about. Let's, Dan, let's get now to our guy, Adam Stadzinski, producer of Take the North. He's also the producer of the Bernstein and Harris show. And uh, Studs, you got something for us here, don't you, brother? Right. So uh, this, this actually came our way. This would have gone over my head if not for a loyal listener sending it to us and saying you guys should check this out so nate tice was on a nate tice who works for yahoo sports formerly of the athletic um was on he's good morning football is he the son of yes mike tice? yes he's son of yeah. son of mike tice uh the guy who kicked patrick manley out of the offensive line room and <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway uh so nate was on good morning football and they had him break down the he he broke down I think three total plays from Caleb Williams. This is one of them. And I, and you'll hear Nate in this explain why, what Caleb Williams has been doing the last few weeks is much more impressive than just the physical attributes that he, that he has. Caleb is not just the physical talent. It's the mental and maturity and playing the quarterback position. That's been really standing out. Sometimes we use all 22, but sometimes we also need the TV copy to see this. So we're going to start with a little friendly interaction, I'll call it, between center Coleman Shelton for the Bears and Caleb Williams. And we'll lead on from there. Cubs, 32, 32, 32. Here we got fire, man. I know. And here we go, 32. So, <laughs> so why does Coleman Shelton sound like, sound like Bill Paxton and Aliens saying game over, game over, is he thinks this is a run play. And why Caleb is so calm and why he is saying, I got it, I got it, is he has answers to detest on this play. And when you uh, pan back out and watch this play, you can see Caleb Williams not only giving the run play. You hear him saying 32, which is the run play. It's 32 power, I'm going to guess. Then you also see him signaling to Roman Dudes at the top of the screen, hey, run an out route here. That's what that little O is. Sorry, Bears coaches, I'm giving away your hand signals. But he, he's giving a little <laughs> O here. Run the little quick out route, which is bypass the blitz. Don't worry about the run play. Don't worry about blocking it. I got the answer here. Not even going to throw the bubble. I'm going to signal the out route and solve the answer to this blitz test. So that's what that fire means. Fire meant, meant fire zone blitz. If you remember Dick LeBeau back with the Steelers, that's what mm -hmm. Coleman Shelton was saying. Didn't matter. Caleb Williams had the answer because his maturity, his understanding of the offense is really at an advanced level so far. So we go from talking about connection to maturity and football intellect, and you, you start to understand why so many of the boxes for playing the quarterback position at a high level are being checked right now by Caleb Williams. Grody, I've been conditioned for 
my decade plus on the beat to be the pump the brakes guy. I tell everybody, slow down, slow down. You got to see it first to believe it. It's being it becoming harder and harder with Caleb to keep your foot over that brake pedal because everything seems to be going forward and you want to just press the gas and be like, man, like this dude's got so many prerequisites to playing this position at a high level. Now, the hardest one is, is doing everything consistently and weathering the struggles and being able to get, uh, you know, handle failure and handle success with the same level of, of sort of composure and grace. But that clip right there from Nate Tice gives you a glimpse into some of the, the football intellect that a lot of people are enamored with. And it's just one of like a half dozen to 10 qualities that people are like, man, this is really, really cool stuff to have in a starting quarterback. Yeah, and I'll, intellect's a great word, too, when we talk about Caleb Williams and what he does on the field and all of that, too. And there's this, fun, there's this like, juxtaposition with him, too, because he can be a goofball, too. Like, you do, like, just watching him. And, and I, I appreciate that. I consider myself a goofball as well. So it's, that, it's, it's crazy to just to watch the way he operates. Also, want to say too. Well, you know, while and I know we've heard the the Coleman Shelton with the fire thing, like you know, with the with the with his own blitz and all of that. But you know, we we do have to give the offensive line uh, some credit here because what looked like a nightmare scenario early on, and I'm not saying like the offensive line is there and more help could be on the way, but Coleman Shelton and that you know, and Tevin Jenkins and that the rest of that and Matt Pryor, Braxton Jones, Darnell Wright. They've been pretty good recently. I don't know what happens when Ryan Bates returns, if they do slide him back in at right guard or maybe, maybe, and I'd say that probably not, maybe he goes to center. I also think that, you know, may, maybe you let Caleb, now that he is getting better and taking more command, at what point, Dan, because if he continues on this trajectory, does Caleb Williams begin to get his own power? You know what I mean? In terms of what, he wants, I don't think we're there yet, but I wouldn't mind them checking in with him in terms of the offensive line and how, how comfortable he feels with Coleman Shelton. Probably a little early on that for, for Caleb, and though the coaches will kind of keep their hands on that. Um, but there's a lot happening that, that's moving in the right direction with his offense, to be certain. And when the quarterback shows discernible growth in these key areas with the high-level playmaking talents that he, we knew he was going to bring to the table, you've got something here. And so you're starting to hear more and more voices inside the building, more and more voices outside the building, all saying, man, like there's some some really impressive stuff here. And and so now we'll just kind of sit back and, and let the next few chapters unfold in this stretch here of, of the next five games before we, uh, before we roll into Thanksgiving week. Our final cut, I do believe today, on our uh, Listen to This segment of Take the North is the great DJ Moore, who, again, low-key man. I I'd love to do a ranking sometime of, of the best talkers in that locker room because we're getting some guys who are being real honest with us. And DJ Moore is a straight shooter. And I think Dan Weeder had one of the great <laughs> moments. <laughs> And I'm so glad you have a sense of humor about it because there was some hilarious stuff from, from DJ Moore. And I believe that this cut starts with him talking about Caleb Williams being bossy, right? Correct. And then, then we'll take it from there. Listen very closely <laughs> to the questions that are being asked. Here it he had is. to grow to where he can like uh, tell, tell everybody what's going on in the huddle and why we're doing it um, on certain things. If you see something – that he doesn't like or he'd tell us like hey make sure it's like this so we're on the same page like he had to grow to that and now you can see like he he bossy but in a not like mean way but like in his own way so take that as you want i mean does it please you i mean is that something you respond to <laughs> doesn't please me but it's good to see uh good to hear him out there doing that and uh that means he's doing growth <laughs> dan <laughs> doing growth uh <laughs> yeah please, uh, you have pleased me greatly <laughs> mr moore <laughs> I'm going to take this down a couple of paths here. The first one being that the exchange didn't end there because as we were walking from the uh, press conference room to the locker room after that, I was kind of ribbing DJ and just being like, look, like I wasn't asking that question in the way that you were taking it. Like you got to let me off the hook with that. And he wasn't letting me off the hook with that. And then we walk into the locker room and he goes, yo, Caleb, you'll never guess what they just asked me down there. He goes, I'm not going to name any names or anything, but somebody asked me if I please you. <laughs> And I said, I said, I said, Caleb, listen, like that was not the verbatim question. Like you can check in on that however you want. 
Well, little did I know that this clip was going to go a little bit viral. And I shared this on 670 The Score on Friday afternoon. I was getting texts from buddies I haven't heard from in two months going, bro, what are you doing? What kind of question is that? You know? And I'm like, man, so like as somebody who really prides myself on being a good question asker, I was like, man, like what what would have been a better way to phrase that? And I, I, I shared this earlier. I, does it satisfy you? No. Does it make you happy? How about <laughs> make you happy? But I, yeah, I, I settled on does it impress you or does it encourage you? That would have been a better way to say it. Yeah. Uh, but certainly I think Studs has got to go ahead and clip that little bit. Like where it, the, I don't know what he said there at the end. Is it, does it please me? No. But it, I feel but like, it, but like it, that's but it's good that, to see. Like I think it's a good a, one. Like a king says, you know, I need to be pleased <laughs> with the answers you have given me. <laughs> it's also funny because I, I don't even know if this is appropriate, but I'll say it. Um, <laughs> years ago, I used to kind of do that. Like I would say, you have pleased me. And I would do it ironically. This is years ago. And I thought it was funny. And people thought it was kind of funny too. But eventually my sister's-in-law told me, Mark, don't do that. Like if you go on dates and stuff, don't say that. Don't don't say, don't do your little please me jokes because it's not going to work. So that's where my brain went. I'm like, oh, Dan's doing a please me joke. It's, it's, it's a red, it's a red flag word apparently. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get pleased out of my, uh, my vocabulary as quick as possible. So not to step in any more traps like that. I do think maybe we, maybe we've got grounds for a new segment here where it's, does it please me? No, but it's good to see. We'll, 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 we'll identify some things once every month that, that, that aren't necessarily uh, pleasing, but they're good to see. And, and oh, BJ, that's will, such a good BJ idea. will be the architect of that. Yes, <laughs> pleased or not pleased. By the way, before we get out of here, Dan, I since I wasn't able to be with you guys on the Take the North podcast the other day, who did you pick in this game? Who was your revelation? And then I'll give you mine as well since I wasn't able to do the big reveal here on TTN. Yeah, we do need your prediction to see if it is unanimous because Studs and I both were Chicago Bears pickers this week. I've got Bears 26 commander's 20 and i said it's a little bit uh uncomfortable for me to 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 take this leap of faith with a team that has to show that it can win on the road that has to show that their young quarterback can play consistently uh do you agree are you going to make it three for three with the take the norse crew we are three for three i am picking the bears to win 24 to 17 and um i say that on the assumption like we both have predicted because you and I can read what's going on that Marcus Mariota will be the quarterback I think they are going to have their way with Mariota I think he will be exposed as a second string quarterback that that he is so we are three for three gentlemen and uh, hopefully the Bears for their sake will come back with a fifth win and be five and two and uh, as things continue to get uh, very interesting Mr. Weir. Yeah, I gotta admit, I'm I'm pleased with the way this episode went. <laughs> this has been filled. Easy, right? with... <laughs> it's good to see. <laughs> it has been filled with pleasure. Yes, it has. For that guy, Dan Pleased Weederer, Adam Stadzinski, our producer. I'm Mark Grody. This is absolutely take the north, and we'll talk to you next time on the show. Great talk. See you out there.